Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Environmental Social Justice. We have a special guest today, Mr. Kerry O'Neill, also known as Mr. Malibu. So welcome to the show, Kerry. Thank you. Welcome to, to you too. <laughs> Thank you. So you actually have a very special project you are working on that you would like to get a little more public recognition. So I'm just going to let you lead on this and take over. So go for it. Sure. Um, and I was wondering, um, so so that uh, in light of sharing this video uh, to, um, to my network of associates and friends and so forth, could you um, just briefly share uh, what you're doing with this webcast and and you know the goal of this so people can know oh what yeah. to do. i get to talk about me <laughs> <laughs> i never get to talk about me <laughs> so environmental social justice is a webcast i created about a year and a half ago focusing on the environment social justice technology climate change my background being environmental risk and one thing i learned is the general public doesn't know all of the terminology that environmental experts do. Mm -hmm. So I started this to talk about technology, uh, progress in climate change and the research people are doing, what people are working on, but in a collaborative manner of no shaming, no blaming, and every little bit helps because not everyone's going to know everything. The general mm -hmm. public's not going to know all the terminology. So I always ask people, no high level jargon, no acronyms, just keep it simple and spread yeah. the word about education and communication. Awesome. Okay. So, um, and I, I, you know how um, media tends to be a little scattered with, you know, mobile phones and Facebook and YouTube and, you know, all these different destinations, but I, I've sort of gleaned um, little snippets. I haven't watched in the entire, I watched your show this morning, which oh. I love that hydrogen uh, airplane thing is that I'm very fascinated by this clean energy and, and I, I'm a firm, ardent believer that technology can, you know, if man can create a problem, then he can probably find a solution. You know? Absolutely. And, and so, um, so in, in any event, um, I thought it would be cool to share um, an approach I made to Sprouts. And um, it's with regard to a piece of property that's actually, it's like a mile from here. <laughs> But um, it's, I believe, and, and forgive me if these uh, are not accurate stats, but I believe the property is somewhere in the neighborhood of like 20 or 24 acres or something, but it's okay. a very large flat piece of land that's um, adjacent just west of the uh, Malibu Trankish Shopping Center. Okay, okay. And um, the, the, uh, real estate agent who's representing that property for sale is Chris Cortazzo. And, you know, and Chris is a really good guy. I've known him for many years and he's the top real estate agent in the entire country. Uh, you know, he has sold over $7 billion worth of homes. And, um, and so he comes along and posts this property for sale, which I, I'm just get throwing out a rough idea here, but I believe that they're proposing you could put four giant mansions on that property. Uh, presumably, you know, these 20 and 30,000 square foot hotel sized mansions. And, um, and so when I saw this property and, and I'm, you know, obviously very familiar with it, having grown up here, um, it reminded me of my childhood when uh, when we were about eight years old, we were allowed to roam all over Malibu, uh, you know, unchaperoned. And um, we would go back by the Malibu Lagoon and across the bridge from the Malibu Lagoon, there was this huge property owned by the Adamson family who once upon a time owned you know, all of Malibu. Yes. And they had this incredible orchard back there. And us children not knowing, you know, borders and boundaries and this and that, we would just go exploring, you know, on an adventure. And I, I remember, you know, eating these fresh berries off of these rows and rows and rows of fresh berries and the oranges and the avocados and the, you know, the trees back there was just it was magic. It was like the childhood magic playing in this, you know, well-groomed orchard. 
And so, you know, when I remembered that feeling, I, I thought, wouldn't it be awesome if we could acquire these 20 acres and build, you know, the most incredible orchard and, and gardens and vineyards or whatever could be grown on that property as a demonstration to the world, to children and to adults to learn about horticulture and learn about how you could monetize, you know, uh, farmlands or orchard lands or, or whatever, but mainly to create love and inspiration for the magic of mother nature of growing things right out of the dirt, you know, and um, <laughs> anyway, so I thought maybe I could read this letter I sent to Please. Um, to um, Sprouts and, and I'll, I'll let you know what they said. Sure. Okay. So here, I'll just read it very briefly. Uh, for some reason, oh, okay. Here we go. I got in. <laughs> I think Google's blocking me, but. <laughs> Technology okay. can be fun sometimes. <laughs> okay, it's on, I'm on a goose chase, but I just found it. <laughs> okay, I found it. This is a cover letter to Jack Sinclair CEO of Sprouts. And I, I didn't want to get in, embroiled in a political, you know, effort or conversation here. I'm just giving him some facts. Okay. Um, Dear Mr. Sinclair, great to meet you. The majority of Malibu residents voted against a Whole Foods in Malibu because of the overdevelopment and commercialization of our small, you know, town community. However, a judge overruled the majority vote and the Malibu community felt wrong because they just went ahead and built it anyway. And, and it's a good store. So I'm not bashing Whole Foods. I'm just saying that the majority of Malibu did vote and they did vote against it. So I said, now there's a powerful opportunity for Sprouts to demonstrate to the world what corporate social responsibility can really do. And in so doing, will elevate its image um, above Whole Foods just because, you know, and not just in Malibu, but nationwide and worldwide. There is a high profile, large prime real estate land titled Zero Trancus Road that was just put on the market. And the real estate agent is representing that a developer can come along and construct some giant mansions on it. I urge Sprouts to purchase the land for the purpose of growing orchards, uh, vegetables, gardens, and a park instead the profits from it could first pay off the purchase price. And I don't know how long it would take to do that. It would take a little while. <laughs> we might get some neighborhood, some neighbor uh, on Broad Beach who go, you know what? I like this idea. I'll put money towards a park instead of four giant mansions. Yeah, I'm just saying it's a possible. Absolutely. You know, so, um, and so I said the profits from it could first pay for the purchase and then thereafter be dedicated to developing a platform for educating children and adults about horticulture and sustainability. Um, and then, uh, and this is not self-promotion, okay? I'm just giving some background about me. Um, I'm fortunate to be known as Mr. Malibu to over 26 million worldwide uh, via celebrity interviews, television, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and print media and um, please see the featured article. And I sent him a, a copy of um, <laughs> Malibu Coast Lifestyle. Right, that's right. Yeah. And so I put the article in there just so he knows that um, I'm a, a local who's really interested in, in sort of a, a white light, or in this case, a green light for a use of a commercial property, you know, and that this magazine, by the way, and this is not a promotion either, but this uh, this is mailed to 7,500 homes in Malibu, you know, reaching 34 billionaires and um, hundreds of global influencers and so on. So the idea being that um, that this project could be well publicized and really create an impact about how do you um, make maximum use of a of a piece of property for uh, horticulture and and farming or whatever. I don't know what's possible, but it opens up. Can you imagine if a school took on, you know, two of the acres and another school took on two of the other acres and it could just be such an incredible project to oh, demonstrate, absolutely. you know, so uh, so how do you feel about that? Do you, 
think it's um, reasonable? Well, is it too I, far I, reaching? I think it's actually extremely reasonable. So let's go over some of the details of um, what this, what the, what could happen here. Uh -huh. So you have a large parcel of lands that could have three to four mansions built. Now, most people don't understand that construction has a very high uh, carbon footprint. Yes. Just, the, just the building of it, the materials, the labor, the machinery that goes on site. Mm -hmm. So that in itself is a global uh, carbon footprint that's quite large. Simultaneously, consumption. I mean, we're not going to win this climate war unless we reduce our consumption. And that includes, do you really need a 30,000 square foot home? Probably not. Most people are perfectly fine with, you know, a few thousand square feet. More than that, you're kind of rattling around a house by yourself. So those two things, you know, it would be better to keep it natural. It would be better for the environment It'd better for the lack, you know, lack of greenhouse gases. You also create a carbon sink by keeping it as a green area, planting um, crops, so to speak, or putting in an orchard or berries that would create more of a carbon sink, create more oxygen. These are all very basic. The most important aspect to me personally is the social justice aspect, meaning teaching children about agriculture, teaching the community about ag agriculture, letting other people from other towns come in and experience this. If you wanted to put in a vineyard, I don't know how well grapes would grow in the area, but you could at least put in a tiny cafe or a restaurant or a green space for people to enjoy. So all of those are benefits to the environment, to the climate, and to the social justice aspect. Putting in more homes, I don't see the benefit. Personally, I don't see the benefit in that. Um, yes, people want to keep building and building and building, but rather than tearing something down and building something new or expanding, let's work with what we've got. Let's work with what we already have and refurbish and reuse and repurpose. So my message out to anyone listening is coming together as a community, keep Malibu small. There's no need to overbuild. I think we've overbuilt enough in certain areas that we are actually pulling back and trying to create more green space in urban areas. Mm -hmm. So let's continue with that progress rather than expanding into places that are already pristine and green and destroying them in the process. That would be my take on it. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, um, it's, it's a chord of uh, perception, if you will, <laughs> You know that is is has reached um, I would say almost mainstream, yes. and um, and one of my I had a really fascinating uh, employment opportunity about six years ago where I was retained by the gentleman who owns the patent that created iTunes, oh. and his company uh, was he was intending to monetize social media because. Um, as we know, you know, there's celebrities on Facebook, like let's say Madonna has 50 million fans. And in, in the corporate reporting of the profits of Facebook, they're reporting $5 a year per fan of profit, you know, and you can imagine. So that's, I don't know what, 200. I'm just, I'm not a mathematician, but it's a lot of money. And they don't give one penny to Madonna, you know. But yes. the idea is that she's using the platform for free. So, you know, That's but in, in essence, well, in any event, um, I was I was hired to do research in the power of social currency and um, and the perception of social currency in a social media environment, which is very important because uh, one of the studies that I did, I showed how the top 25 celebrities who gave back to the, you know, who actually invested in a green planet and, and helping people, lifting people up, helping troubled people, you know, those celebrities, their social currency went way up, you know, and their perception of the value of these people who are utilizing celebrity for a mission, which of course, you know, it's like a global formula because, there's even a website called Celebrity Causes, and they just have, they expect every celebrity to have a cause. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> I'm just saying, but um, in, in light of all that, we did realize, and this is the bottom line, 
for corporate social responsibility, CSR programs, they prove statistically that those corporations that invested in the community and really had a genuine impact in people's lives, their profits were 11% higher than their competitors. I they, believe it. Yeah, they actually demonstrated profitability of CSR. <laughs> I absolutely believe that. And a lot of people are, are now fortunately focusing on climate change, CSR, also ESG, new term for environmental social governance as more corporations. But um, we do need to focus on the now and not just talking about it, but actually acting on it. This parcel of land is a perfect example of that. Act on it now, preserve it for future generations, because just building another house on it in 20 years, it'll get torn down and rebuilt. 30 years, it'll get torn down and rebuilt. That's not sustainable. It's not the right decision. Preserving it, turning it into an orchard, turning it into a, um, a usable space for the public. That's the right thing to do. I think you're on the right track. So what can we do through this webcast to help you? How can people find you or donate or I'm just going to call it out. Robert Downey Jr. lives in Malibu and he's a very you know high level environmentalist. Just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> yeah, I've I've met Robert several times, and he's a wonderful guy, and uh, we have we have connections on other um, interests and and things and so forth. And I, I do believe that someone like him would love to see what we're trying to do and see what are the possibilities at the minimum, you know. And um, and like you're saying, there could be even there could be a a school on the property for horticulture. I mean, who knows? Absolutely. Every Kids kind of learn. Place. And why wouldn't a corporation want to align with that message? And and I understand maybe Sprouts, maybe Jack is under the gun to produce every penny and nickel from whatever he's leveraging. You know, I understand that it's it's a business goal and so on. But at some point, there has to be a consideration of is it business at the cost of, and yes. is that cost of getting so uh, transparent, shall we say, that people are going, wow, this is not sustainable. Where can we start making a difference? And we believe that if you're trying to do something good with a piece of property, because after all, the, the Chumash Indians were here 14,000 years ago, peacefully living and fishing off, you know, and and this is a sacred land, uh, basically. Yeah. And and so to come along and just put in four massive mansions is uh, I get the idea that people have to make money. But in that in that way, um, I'm just curious. I, I don't want to bash developers either. No. But I still insist that that's overdevelopment from my I, perspective. And I agree with that. I mean, one of the one of the best lessons I learned when I was studying sustainability was how much is enough. Right. The knowledge of knowing how much is enough is the most valuable concept you will ever have. When you know that you personally have enough in your life that you don't have to show off and you don't have to prove anything and that you're content, you will finally be at peace. And so many people don't achieve that. So um, with respect to this parcel, is there a website or a way people could contact you if they're interested in helping? Uh, yes, and and that's a wonderful question, and um, and I'm not making any excuses. I'm uh, this is one of many things that I've been sort of casually contemplating on getting in in in, in evolving it, you know. Uh, but to answer your question, yes, uh, MalibuHD.com. Okay. Um, and anybody can email me, um, MalibuHD at gmail.com and um and we can you know we can share ideas of what possibly could take place you know with this property and how we could move forward or you know whatever whatever people uh, are i'm just trying to approach this from a open mind and yeah. i love your no shaming no blaming just let's see what's possible that's i love that message. collaboration it's all we got left <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, very much so. So, um, so that's basically it. And and did I cover everything, or do, is there something else that you think? No, you absolutely nailed it. And um, you know, I love the concept of preservation because 
if we don't preserve, we, we're just going to overbuild everything, and we need to stop doing that. So um, thank you so much, Carrie. I will. This will be posted shortly. I will also add in your email and your website so people can find you easily. Um, but this is a great idea, and I really hope that um, it's successful because I think it's extremely valuable. Wow. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate your communications and all the guests that you're hosting and all this wonderful solutions and now it's like it seems like we need to like create a marriage between the unspent money that they're looking to make a good impact and it's not greenwashing but it's like, <laughs> you know? oh don't you start on the greenwashing <laughs> i call that out all the time <laughs> but in a nice way <laughs> yeah so that's awesome i really appreciate your time no, thank you. Thank you for bringing this to everyone's attention. I think it's important that people know, and they wouldn't have known about this if you had not stepped forward to talk about it. Awesome. All Amazing. Right. I look forward to hearing any suggestions and see if we can spread this around and get some traction going. Absolutely. Spread the word. Tell people. Reach out to Carrie. This is a very important deal. We will talk to you guys soon, okay? Take care. Thank you so much.